Hello everyone, this is Dr. E, and for today, let's convert time and temp temperature in today's lesson. From our previous lessons, we know that the conversion factor is important for us to be able to convert one unit of measurement to another, and it's also the same technique that we're going to be using when we are converting a unit of measurements that we use using the time and temperature. So for time, this will be the unit of measurement that we're going to be using. So we know that there's 24 hours in a day and there's 60 minutes in an hour and so on. And this units of time that we often use will use this cheat sheet so that we'll be able to convert some problems like this to hours into how many seconds. And to be able to do that, we'll use our cheat sheet to find our conversion factor now. Most of you can easily convert two hours into seconds because most of, our, most of us are familiar with the conversion factor of time because we often use this as opposed to changing pounds into kilograms or kilograms into milligrams or quarts into seven pints. It's because when we talk about time, we often use it so converting it is a lot easier. Now let's use our technique from the previous lesson and see how we're going to convert this procedurally using algebra. So let's start with writing out what we need to convert just like what we did in our previous lesson. So we need to convert two hours into something seconds. So the formula is for us to multiply two hours by the conversion factor. And to be able to produce the conversion factor, we need to formulate it using our cheat sheet right there. So let's produce our conversion factor or factors depending on our cheat sheet. So there's no direct, direct conversion from hours to seconds, but we have one hour is to 60 minutes. And we also have minute in two seconds. And from here, we're making a connection from hour to minutes, minutes to seconds, so that we'll be able to convert hours into seconds. So let's start formulating our conversion factor. So our first conversion factor will be coming from this conversion unit. So by dividing both sides by an hour, we'll have one unit is equal to 60 minutes all over one hour. And for our minute to seconds, we will divide this into minutes. So we'll have a unit of measurement that is equal to 60 seconds per one minute. And by doing so, we have two conversion factor that we can multiply to two hours so that we convert it into seconds. So our new equation will now become two hours times the first conversion factor, which is 60 minutes all over one hour, multiplied to the other or last conversion factor, which is 60 seconds all over a minute. Now, by looking at our equation, see how many unit of measurements can you cancel out? Is there a way to cancel out the unit of measurement and leave it with only one? And the answer is yes. That means we don't need to reciprocate any of our conversion factor because from here, we can cancel out the hour unit of measurement and the minutes. And now we are only left with seconds, which is what we're trying to convert our two hours into. So we have two times 60 times 60. And don't forget the unit of measurement and using our calculator, we'll be able to find the value of two hours in seconds. And this in turn is going to equal to two times 60 times 60 is 7,200 seconds. So there's 7,200 seconds in two 
hours using the method that we just did. So this is the same technique that we use in our previous problems or lessons on conversion. And this is basically going to work as well when we work it out with the unit of time or unit of measurement or conversion unit using time. So this is 7,200 seconds for two hours. And let's see if we can use this technique again for 10,080 minutes. So let's convert it into days. And just looking at the cheat sheet that we have, we can use from minutes to days, we have day to hours and hours to minutes. So that means we're going to be using two conversion factors to achieve our goal of converting 10,080 minutes into something number of days. So let's start again with our format and our procedure starts with what we're trying to convert. We're converting 10,080 minutes into something days or number of days. So the conversion factors that we need, we know that we need two of them and we're going to connect it with days to hours and hours to minutes so that we can hit those two units of measurement in our problem. So we have one day is equal to 24 hours and we have one hour is equal to 60 minutes. And now Dividing this by day will give us the one unit that we need, which is equal to 24 hours is equal to one day. And the other unit of measurement or conversion factor, we divide both sides by the hour and we'll have one unit is equal to 60 minutes over one hour. Now, using this conversion factor, let's formulate our equation. And we are going to have 10,080 minutes multiplied to the first conversion factor, which is 24 hours in one day times 60 minutes in one hour. Now, just like a rubric cube, is there any way that we can cancel one or two unit of measurement if we reciprocate our conversion factor? Days, minutes, hour. Maybe we can cancel out the hour and the hour, but the minutes, it's not possible because the minutes needs to be on the opposite side of our fraction so we can cancel it out. So that means what we can do is to reciprocate this and we reciproc reciprocate this factor as well so that we can eliminate as many conversion unit possible. So let's try that. So we'll have our new equation as 10,000 multiplied by one day multiplied by one hour over 60 minutes. And by doing so, now we can cancel out minutes and minutes, hours and hours, and we are left with day, which is what we are converting this unit of measurement into. So we'll have 10,080 minutes. There's no more minutes multiplied by one day all over 24 times one all over 60. So now we have 10, 0, 80 days all over 24 times 60. And now that we have our fraction with our handy dandy calculator, we'll be able to produce the product of 24 and 60, and then divide it with 10, 0, 80, and we'll have the conversion factor that gave us is going to give us seven days. So that means 10,080 minutes is equal to seven days if we convert it using our method of producing our conversion factor using our cheat sheet that we have in our slide. So this is how we convert unit of measurement of time using the conversion factor. Now let's have 
the temperature and see how we can convert it into Fahrenheit or Celsius. So there are two temperature scales. One is Fahrenheit, which is used most often here in the United States, and Celsius, which is used internationally or in other or the rest of the world, except probably the US and in science. Comment it down below if you know of a country that uses Fahrenheit aside from the US, because as far as I know, it's just the US or where I'm at right now that uses Fahrenheit instead of Celsius. So when it comes to uh, being familiar with uh, the Fahrenheit and the Celsius, let's talk about the weather. So sunny weather and winter weather, when you are in different countries, we're using different temperature reading depending on where you're at. So for a sunny weather, a beach day weather, 32 degrees Celsius is how it feels like if you are in the beach, but here in the U.S., it will register at 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you are not familiar with Fahrenheit and you looked at 90 degrees, you might think that it's extremely hot and you don't want to go out, not knowing that it's actually equal to 32 degrees. And if it's winter in uh, Celsius degree, it's going to be negative 10 degrees Celsius, but on Fahrenheit, it's going to be a positive unit of measurement, which is 14 degrees Fahrenheit. So make sure that you're understanding the differences of the way we read temperature in different parts of the world. And in the diagram, you will see that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, but on Fahrenheit, it's 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you're using an oven, make sure that your oven is using a Celsius or a Fahrenheit so that you don't overcook or undercook whatever it is you're baking. And let's start working with conversion of Celsius to Fahrenheit using our formula. You can either use F is equal to 9 over 5 times C plus 32 or convert 9 over 5 into decimal, which is 1.8. And we're going to use this formula so that we can compute or convert 42 degrees Celsius into Fahrenheit. So this is our cheat sheet and all we need to do is to use our formula which is pretty straightforward. We don't need a conversion factor for this because we only have two sets of formula for temperature. It's either Celsius to Fahrenheit or Fahrenheit to Celsius and in this case we're converting 42 degrees Celsius into something degree Fahrenheit. So that means we're looking for Fahrenheit and F is equal to 1.8 times Celsius plus 32 degrees or 32. So using the order of operation, we're going to multiply first. So we're going to have 1.8 multiplied to 42 and then we're going to add it to 32 afterwards so that we can get our correct reading in Fahrenheit and using our calculator it will give us 107.6 degrees and this is now in Fahrenheit and this is our converted temperature from 42 degrees now we know it's 107.6 degrees Fahrenheit using our formula which is 1.8 times C plus 32 C is 42 and using our calculator we know that F is equal to 107.6 degrees and this is how we convert time using this formula there's no conversion factor because we already have a conversion formula to be able to accomplish our goal so let's see how we can convert Fahrenheit to Celsius and to be able to do this you don't need to derive the formula using the previous formula we know that Celsius is equal to 5 over 9 times F minus 32 so let's use that so we can convert 87 degrees Fahrenheit into Celsius so using our formula from 87 degrees Fahrenheit into something degrees Celsius. We just need our conversion formula, which is C is equal to five all over nine, multiplied by the value of F minus 32 degrees. So we have C is equal to five over nine times Fahrenheit, which is 87 minus 32. And using our calculator, 
we'll be able to find the correct conversion because we know that 5 over 9 times the difference of 87 and 32 is going to equal to 30.6 degrees and that is the converted temperature from Fahrenheit 87 degrees into Celsius which is 30.6 degrees and that is the difference between converting temperature and the other form of unit of measurement so if you are going to convert length into another metric system or another uh, unit of measurement you may be using the conversion factor that you need to formulate just like what we did on our time or unit of measurement in terms of time from our previous example. That's why our number bender challenge for the day, after finding out the converted Fahrenheit to Celsius, is for you to convert 525,600 minutes into days. Sounds familiar? So if you know your answer, comment it down below. Figure out the conversion factor that you need to convert 525,600 minutes into days. And this is our lesson for today on algebra. And remember that in changing our unit of measurement for temperature, it's straightforward. But anything else, we need our conversion factor. And to be able to formulate your conversion factor correctly, make sure that you're using your unit of conversion from our cheat sheet to be able to convert your unit of measurement correctly. This is Dr. E and see you again next time.